According to Israeli investigative journalists at 972 Plus magazine, Israel has been using an artificial intelligence machine called Lavender to identify thousands of potential Hamas targets in Gaza. The report says Israeli intelligence sources who served in the current war told how Lavender collects information on almost all the 2.3 million residents of the Gaza Strip through a system of mass surveillance, and on a scale of 1 to 100 gives a likelihood that each person is a member of the military wing of Hamas, being in a WhatsApp group with a known militant, changing address frequently, or swapping phones every few months, could all be factors in the machine determining potential targets to kill. The report claims that after October the 7th, Israel decided to move from targeting high-level Hamas figures to anyone regarded as in the organization, no matter how junior, and alleges that during the first stage of the war, when thousands were killed in a few weeks, the military allowed for 15 to 20 civilians to be killed as collateral damage per militant. In a system dubbed Where's Daddy, bombings often taking place when targets had been tracked to their family homes. At its peak, Lavender allegedly picked out 37,000 possible targets. In its development, it is claimed human checks on the targets selected by Lavender suggested it was accurate 90% of the time in picking out Hamas members. So in a campaign killing thousands, it was accepted that one in 10 targets were not Hamas. Lavender was allegedly wrongly picking police officers, civil defense workers, or relatives of militants. In a statement to Channel 4 News, the IDF denied using AI to identify targets and said, contrary to Hamas, the IDF is committed to international law and acts accordingly. They claimed to make efforts to reduce harm to civilians and said that exceptional incidents undergo thorough examinations and investigations. And the process of identifying military targets in the IDF consists of various types of tools and methods. Well, earlier I spoke to the journalist Yuval Abraham, who wrote that article for Plus 972 magazine. The IDF have issued a statement saying the IDF does not use an artificial intelligence system that identifies terrorist operatives or tries to predict whether a person is a terrorist. I read that out to, to one of the sources and he, he, he burst out laughing. He said, it's just not true. It's a lie. I mean, and if you look at, for example, in 2023, the IDF itself, one of the top commanders in the IDF, the head of the 8200 AI data center, gave a lecture in Tel Aviv University where he presented a machine that, quote, uses AI to identify terrorists. He was relating to 2021. So, so I, I don't know who wrote that response from the IDF, but it's, it's clearly not true um, based on their own statements in the past and also based on what I've heard from, from numerous Israeli intelligence officers. The sources said that they knew there's a data science team that checked. They took a random sampling of, of this 37,000 and checked one by one. They realized that the machine is off occasionally marking complete civilians or people who have a very loose relation to Hamas. The, the decision was made to, to, to authorize strikes based on this list without meaningfully supervising it. One source, yeah, for example... That, that's the key, isn't it? The, this question of of what they would do with the list to check it. Because the Israeli well, so statement you, uh, is very, uh, uh, you know, they're very yeah. insistent that there's a process of identifying uh, military targets uh, and that these are, you know, that, the, that these are people and teams um, according to international humanitarian law. And what your article is suggesting is that there were no meaningful checks at all. So what sources told me is that the protocol in the places that they were in, in the IDF, was to check. The only check that was in place was to listen if the, if the, if the targeted individual it has a male voice or a female voice. And if it's a female, they said the machine for sure made a mistake because it's not supposed to mark women. There are no women who, who, who are militants. But if it's a male, they were to accept Lavender's recommendation without needing to look at it, without needing to, to look at the raw intelligence data, and one source, I asked him, he, he said, he claimed he bombed dozens of houses every day based on these recommendations in the beginning. He said 40, 50 houses a day that he authorized. And I asked him, how much time did you spend before bombing, bombing a house that, that is often killing a Palestinian family? 
And he told me, and this is a quote, he said, roughly 20 seconds. It does not take a long time to figure out if somebody has a male voice or a female voice. And I've heard that criteria, male or female, from more than one source. How, how did they explain that they were ordered to work in that way? You know, could Israel say these were people who were not doing their job properly? You know, analysts are supposed to look at lists, analyze intelligence, and take considered decisions. And if they were only considering it for 20 seconds, they weren't doing their job. So what I heard from these sources is that this is the command they got. Like this was this like one source said, quote, there was not a zero mistake policy in order to accelerate the target production, in order to 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 bomb so many human targets. They 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 realized that they have to to accept these machine results. What difference do you think the AI machine made? You know, do, do you think it meant that they were able to kill more people more quickly or or? Or perhaps, you know, without that machine, might the bombing have been even more indiscriminate? One of the sources told me, he said, the machine did it in a cold way. He said, everybody lost people on October 7th. You know, the, the fact that we relied on the machine so much, on a statistical mechanism, you know, it, it made him feel comfortable. And this, and this operation came in the exp on the expense of precision. It came on the expense of targeting civilians occasionally as targets. And it came on, on the expense of, of the human agency of Israeli soldiers. And I saw it again and again in the process, in calculating how many civilians are in each house. You know, some sources said they did not even check if they managed to kill the targets. They, they abandoned the BDA protocol, bomb damage assessment, so they can move on to the next target. I think this emphasis that was placed on the kill lists, you know, we're going to kill every single Hamas operative, even if it means that we will sometimes kill civilians, and even if it means if we're going to kill entire families in the process. One source said that this policy, in his mind, was partially motivated by revenge. And I think the last thing I will say, you know, I think if international law has meaning, if when we are saying all of these things that we've been hearing over the past months, a principle of proportionality, a principle of distinction, if these words have meaning, if they're not just, you know, some, this is some slip service that we're paying, then, then, then I think what my, my investigation show and what my sources are telling me is that the military emptied it out of meaning. Yuval Abraham, thank you very much. Thank you.